if you do an effect on these guys, the uh, Nightingale Sentinels, you can do basic. You can change their appearance to that of a Nightingale, which is pretty wicked. I want to try it and see if it works with this. I guess I don't have the right shot for it. If you have the uh, mark for death, it would work better. <laughs> Nifty. Never saw that before. Well, I've seen it, but I've ignored it. I sense a presence. <gasps> I'm pretty sure you can hardly see, it's kind of dark. Even from my screen. <coughs> Alright. This is a puzzle. Basically, don't touch the light or you get hurt. I'll show you. See? And not just a few seconds in there. Uh, there we are. I'm gonna shoot that. If I can. Just somewhat trigger it. Not do I. Oh, I'll screw it. And here is Lady Nocturnal herself. You'll get to see a better version of her later. Just barely got hit. That one I got fully hit. If you want to explore the sepulchre more over there, but I'm going to keep going. There's nothing over there besides a few books and uh, Chester too. Nothing um, overly special. <laughs> this turn is supposed to fuck you over and make you fall in there without realizing. And you actually have to do it. I'll show you what I mean by it. Run, turn, fall. I did it by accident the very first time. I was so pissed. Oh. And this guy fell down here too. He got he couldn't get out. You can just run around until you get out, but <laughs> you can stand still as well. I wonder. No, don't work. Oh well. What do we have here? It's been a number of years since I've set foot on your world. Or perhaps it's been moments one tends to lose track. So, once again, the key has been stolen, and a champion returns it to the Sepulchre. Now that the Ebonmere has been restored, you stand before me awaiting your accolades. A pat on your head, a kiss on your cheek. What you fail to realize is your actions were expected and represent nothing more than the fulfillment of your agreement. 
Don't mistake my tongue for displeasure. After all, you've obediently performed your duties to the letter. But we both know this has little to do with honor and oaths and loyalty. It's about the reward, the prize. Fear not. You'll have your trinkets, your desire for power, your hunger for wealth. I bid you to drink deeply from the Ebonmere mortal, for this is where the agent of Nocturnal is born. The oath has been struck, the die has been cast, and your fate awaits you in the Everglow. Farewell, Nightingale. See to it the key stayed this time, won't you? I'm glad you were able to bring the key back safely. Nocturnal seemed quite pleased with your efforts. I wouldn't take that to heart. It's her way. Think of her as a scolding mother continually pushing you harder to be successful, outwardly sounding angry, but silently content. I assure you, had she been displeased with you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The circles at the base of the Ebonmere imbue you with powers befitting a Nightingale agent. The Crescent Moon represents the agent of Shadow, the Half Moon for the agent of Subterfuge, and the Full Moon for the agent of Strife. This is Nocturnal's way of maintaining balance. If you ever feel the need to change your abilities, you can return to the Sepulchre and step onto a different circle. Be warned that once you've chosen, you can't reselect for at least a day. Now, your life as a Nightingale begins. Should the need arise, you'll be summoned to the Sepulchre in order to defend it. The Guild has welcomed me back with open arms. I feel like a void in my life has finally been filled. I only hope that this isn't an ending to things, but actually the beginning. Why, perhaps the greatest crime spree Skyrim's ever known. There are pockets brimming with coin, and coffers overflowing with riches ripe for the picking. We may be nightingales, but in our hearts we're still thieves, and we're damn good at what we do. Okay, for those making a thief or assassin character, I recommend the Agent of Sh Stealth, which is the Crescent Moon. Alright. There's a cut, there's a scene back there involving Carlia and Gallus. I never watch it because it's just long. So, if you want to stay back and watch it for those playing along, feel free to. Also, you don't have to go through that ever, that whole... Uh, Twilight Sepulchre thing again, just go through that and go straight to the Ebon Mirror. But the sh uh, Shadow Cloak of, no Cloak of Nocturnal, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, it's insanely helpful. Um, you use it, and for two minutes you're able to literally vanish whenever you crouch. Which is really freaking helpful. Alright, let us go to the Thieves Guild and become Guildmaster. And that'll be the end of this set. Relatively long set, but the Thieves Guild usually isn't, if I believe, remember remember correctly. I remember um, Sliver telling me about it, I think. The other <laughs> quest lines aren't nearly as long, I believe. And I'm lagging. That's only because my PS3 has been on for a while, so. Okay, this is going to be the first time you guys get to see the uh, newly upgraded guild. This happens when you do the extra quests.
Hold on a second. I'm gonna show you some things before we go on. Just need to get to it. Where is it? There we are, okay. Let's go. This is the... Oop. It's good to see you in one piece, lass. I just wanted to give you a proper thank you for everything you've done. The guild is back on its feet again, and on its way to a prosperous future. What's become of the skeleton key? That's it, then. After all those years of helplessly watching the guild decline. But enough of that. I'm confident that with you in charge, we'll soon have more gold than we could possibly spend. I'll be down here, trying to coordinate everything with Delvin and Vex, to make sure the coin keeps flowing, and no one skims. If you still feel like doing some jobs, I'm sure Delvin and Vex have more than their fair share to give out. Either way, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Here's to the future of the Guild. May it last another thousand years. Well, my friend, the time's come to make it official. It's time to become our guild master. Don't worry. I promise this will be short and sweet. If you'll just meet us in the center of this cistern room, we can begin. All you do is stand here and wait while every all the guild members surround. never been good at these things, so I'm just gonna keep it short. Being Guildmaster means more than just getting a cut of all the loot. It's about being a leader, and keeping this rabble in order. With that in mind, I propose that the position of Guildmaster should be yours. Delvin? Agreed. Thanks. Sure. Why not? Carlia. Absolutely. Everyone is in agreement. So all I can do now is name you Guildmaster. I wish you good fortune and long life. Now everyone, get back to work. I suppose you deserve it. You need anything. Anything at all. Well, that's it. Sorry if it isn't the ceremony you were hoping for. But we're not exactly known for throwing our coin around. After we're done, head over to Tanelia. And she'll set you up with your guild master armor. Oh, and one last thing. Here, I want you to take this. It's sort of a tradition around here. All right. God, so much lag. I can't think of a better person for the anyway, I'm going to save and describe what's what you're looking at right now while I while it's loading. Um, in the background, you see all the artifacts we've gotten so far. That's where they go. Um, as you complete extra jobs, you get extra little things that pop up there as well. They are uh, trophies for completing a certain number of things. After completing five jobs, you get a jeweled candlestick, which is already up there. Fifteen jobs, you get, you get an ornate drinking horn, which is already up there. Uh, Twenty-five, you get a, a golden ship model. Thirty-five is a golden urn. 45 is a jeweled goblet, 55 is a jeweled flagon, and 75 is a jeweled pitcher. If you go above and beyond, you get 100 and do 125 jobs at least, you get a little safe that goes right about here that uh, gives you random loot and some special potions and whatnot that increases, that helps you.